have concrete proof that they have already, uh, terrorist groups and others are taking action, making changes, and it's going to make our job tougher. The purpose of these programs and the reason we use secrecy is not to hide it from the American people, not to hide it from you, but to hide it from those who walk among you who are trying to kill you. I'm Morgan Spurlock, guest hosting for Piers Morgan tonight, and that was NSA Director Keith Alexander. He says leaks about the American government surveillance programs put the American people at risk. My next guest does not agree. He's Glenn Greenwald, the man who broke the NSA leaker story for The Guardian. Glenn, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Thanks for joining us tonight. What is your reaction to what uh, Director Keith Alexander said? Every single time government officials try and do things and hide it from the American people and then get caught doing what they're doing, they do the same thing. They scream the word terrorism over and over in the hope that people will get scared. It's just pure fear-mongering and agree that they should be able to do whatever they want. The reality is that nothing we expose informed the terrorists of anything. The spying we exposed had nothing to do with terrorism. It was bulk collecting phone records, chats, emails of American, the American people indiscriminately. The only thing that we informed anybody of was not the terrorists, but the American people that the spying apparatus built in the dark is aimed at them. Well, why did he leave the U.S. in the first place? Why not stay here and fight? If he was really a hero, wouldn't he have just, you know, be seen a little differently if he'd have just stuck around and kind of stood his ground? I don't think so. Um, if you look at what Bradley Manning, for example, did, um, who leaked thousands of, of pages showing serious war crimes on the part of the United States, he didn't run, and yet most people in the media and lots of people in the United States viewed him as, as somehow um, an odious person, even a traitor. He's been locked away in a cage for many years, and we haven't heard from him. There's an op-ed by Daniel Ellsberg, who most people consider to be a heroic whistleblower in the Washington Post from two weeks ago, who said that Snowden was right to flee, because unlike when when Daniel Ellsberg was charged with, with leaking, he was able to be free during the trial. He was able to speak publicly. If In this country now, whistleblowers in the Obama administration are treated very harshly. If, if Mr. Snowden came back, he would be stuck in prison. He wouldn't be allowed to participate in the debate that he helped provoke, and, and it'd be very unlikely that he would get a fair trial. That's from Daniel Ellsberg in the Washington Post, who said that Snowden was right to leave the country. In an interview with uh, an Argentinian newspaper, you stated that Snowden had more to reveal. Uh, your quote is, the U.S. government should be on their knees every day praying that nothing happens to Snowden because if something happens, all information will be revealed and that would be their worst nightmare. Right. That was, you know, before I began reporting this story, I wrote an article about how anybody who exposes what the U.S. government is doing is the target of smear campaigns and demonization. And that was a perfect example of how Reuters took that quote completely out of context. I made the exact opposite point as the one that Reuters and government defenders tried to claim that I, I made. That answer was in response to a question which was, do you think the United States government will try and kill Mr. Snowden? And I said, that would make no sense. He has with him extremely sensitive documents that he has been insistent not be disclosed because his goal is not to harm the United States, but to shed light to his fellow citizens on what the government is doing. And if he were killed, there'd be no telling how those documents would then get released, probably more irresponsibly. If I were the U.S. government, I would be praying for his health, not trying to kill him because of how responsible of a whistleblower he's been in insisting that these stories be reported judiciously. Sources have told uh, CNN's Barbara Starr that Snowden doesn't have the crown jewels of the NSA, the extremely uh, compartmentalized information. It seems that you guys differ on this. Uh, why, why is that? Well, you know, Barbara Starr is very good at going to government officials and having them whisper in her ear and then repeating what they say and calling that reporting. The way that I like to do reporting is by going and looking at actual documents, not listening to what government officials tell me in secret and then passing it on. And I've seen the documents, and what I know about these documents is that some of them, by necessity, um, are very sensitive because he needed to have documents to prove that what he was saying was true, and some of the documents that he took to show that what he was saying was true contained sensitive material, very um, technical information and the like. And, and he, when he came to us, said... I do not want any of this sensitive information revealed. I don't want to harm the United States. I simply want to shine light on what, government, on what government officials are doing in the dark that American citizens should know about. So I know these documents that he took are sensitive, and he, that's why he instructed us to be very careful in how he reported them. Uh, what more information does he have to reveal? Well, it isn't that he has more to reveal. He has given us all the documents that I believe he intends to leak. You know, there's, uh, there are in excess of 10,000. He gave those to us 
um, six or seven weeks ago when I was in Hong Kong, and so we've been in the process of reporting it, vetting it, and there's definitely more stories to be reported that we're in the process now of writing about things that the United States government is doing to American citizens in terms of collecting very invasive information about them, the lack of oversight that NSA analysts have as they sit at their terminals and can read anyone's email they want or listen to whatever calls they want, the deals that the United States government strikes with internet companies and telecoms to have the data about their customers turned over to the United States in mass, really just a worldwide ubiquitous spying system that is being constructed without any oversight or real checks, and, and there's still lots of programs within that apparatus that are still to be reported. Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Bolivia have all offered Snowden asylum. Do you know where he would like to go, what his preference is? I think his, his, really, his only goal is to make sure that he can continue to participate in, in the debate over surveillance. That was his main goal, to help provoke. Um, I think where he ends up is, is really secondary. The problem is there aren't that many countries in the world who are both able and willing to apply the law rather than simply capitulate to U.S. dictates. His choices are limited. Um, it's been reported that in order to apply for asylum in Russia, he's agreed not to divulge any more information about the U.S. government. What can you tell me about that? Well, like I said, his, he, as far as I know, he never, even before he got to Russia, he doesn't have any intention of disclosing more information. He vetted all the documents that he took with him very carefully. He turned over the ones to us that he thought we should report on. He kept the ones, presumably, that he didn't think should be. So the condition that the Russians have imposed on him for staying there, which is don't leak any more documents, is one that I think is very easily complied with since he has already turned over to us all of the documents that he wants us to have. You touched on it earlier, uh, but I'd love to have, kind of have you talk about it a little bit more. How difficult is it going to be for him as he's working with the governments trying to figure out a way to seek asylum, to create a travel plan, since ultimately he is going to be flying through restricted airspace? Well, there are ways to get from Moscow to, to Latin America without having to fly over airspace that is controlled by the United States or its allies. It takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of resources. Um, it takes a lot of planning, but there certainly are ways to do it. It's just that um, if you have the most powerful state on the earth, which has proven that legal constraints and the norms of international relationships are no barrier to engaging in behavior, something the United States has proven throughout the entire war on terror and has proven recently in this case, it becomes a lot more difficult. But he believes it's feasible. He's going to stay in Russia until he's able to do that, is my understanding. Um, and what he's most interested in doing is making sure that light continues to be shined on what the NSA and, and, and our government officials are doing when spying on Americans. That's really what he cares about most. What is Snowden's relationship with WikiLeaks? Has he continued to be in contact with the organization and Julian Assange? I don't think he had any relationship with WikiLeaks, and not, at least not until my knowledge, until WikiLeaks provided him with assistance in leaving Hong Kong at the request of the, or at the invitation or, or the, with the permission of the government of Hong Kong, and then seeking asylum. Um, so as far as I know, his, his relationship has always been and, and still is limited um, in the sense that WikiLeaks has helped him uh, apply for asylum um, and to leave Hong Kong. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham is proposing that the United States boycott the Winter Olympics in Sochi in February if uh, Snowden is granted asylum. Your reaction? Well, it's really interesting because the United States grants asylum all the time to people who are fleeing places like China or Russia or other places around the world. And I never hear any U.S. official or politician or member of the U.S. media ever say something like, isn't it strange that this person would seek asylum in a country that created a worldwide torture regime and continues to imprison people without charges in Guantanamo and drones children to death, um, persecutes whistleblowers, has had all kinds of abuse reports filed by Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch. The idea of asylum is not that you try and declare the country that you're seeking it from to be the perfect bastion of civil liberties. The idea is that you are seeking protection from persecution at home. And so if Russia grants him asylum, what they're doing is something countries all over the world do, which is applying this universally recognized right. I mean, Lindsey Graham is somebody who wants to go to war with every country that he can find on the globe practically. So the idea that he's threatening Russia shouldn't come as any surprise, but all Russia is doing in this case um, is protecting uh, uh, Mr. Snowden's human rights from a government, the United States, that wants to persecute him. Does Snowden have any regrets giving up his life here in the United States? 
It's amazing. He, that's, to me, the most surprising thing about this case from the beginning. I mean, here's a 29-year-old kid. He had a life that most people would envy, a, a longtime girlfriend living in Hawaii, a, a stable career, a lucrative paycheck. Um, and he said to me from the beginning that he understood that he was risking prison for the rest of his life, but felt compelled that he couldn't in good conscience allow this to be done to the privacy rights of his fellow Americans without them at least knowing that it's being done so they can take action. And I've never seen him waver from that resolve, even as he's undergone a very intense and high-pressured situation over the last month, he's still very tranquil and at peace with the decision he made, especially as he watches within the United States, Republicans and Democrats join together because of what he disclosed and work to reform these, these surveillance abuses. Glenn, thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coming up